Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good morning, John. How are you doing? Hey, what makes you think it's morning? And what's it to you anyway? Because, you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at you and I'm seeing an electric personality. Don't you love those old movies? Uh, where, those, uh, that's a Van de Graaff, um, oh, Jacob's Ladder. But it's a Van Jacob's de Graaff. Jacob's Ladder. I knew you'd know right. the name of it. Yeah. Well, I remember great, it from the, from, what is it, from the, uh, uh, from the Ming the Merciless's lab, right? <laughs> anyway. and, and Ming could walk across right. that electric bridge. And also, they had that in uh, uh, Franken, uh, Frankenstein or whatever, the, the parody of Frankenstein. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, anyway. But electricity. Electricity mm -hmm. is a fascinating topic because it's right around the corner on an all-electric world. By the way, do you remember the all-electric kitchen? promotion yeah, that I, GE I, did in the what in the 70s especially the ones that had that metal grate in the middle that was god awful it was the worst possible way to cook anything ever yeah That's my opinion well my favorite was that they were promoting the the all electric home and the all electric right. kitchen and then what happened all those poor fools that actually changed everything to electricity mm -hmm. the price went sky high <laughs> nobody could afford that people were tearing out their electric Still. Unless you lived in the Pacific Northwest or around Niagara Falls, where there was a hydroelectric power, uh, because the uh, the nuclear power at Three Mile Island was not such a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so now we're on the cusp of a new electric revolution, the electric car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you buy an electric car? So, I'm maybe a hybrid, but all electric, electric. Not until I had a house with solar power. <laughs> okay, so with a with a recharging station uh, during the day, I could just plug it in. Uh, yeah. Although I do believe they're going to come, but I don't think that the um, the uh, the network of recharging stations, although we're in Southern California, we're probably better than most, is sufficient enough to make me feel comfortable to go on a very long trip, other than just locally. And then if we have blackouts and brownouts like we tend to have here in Southern California during the summer. Uh, so I'm probably going to be a late adopter on that, but I, I believe that they are going to be the primary uh, uh, source of at least passenger cars. Really? I, see, I don't think so. I, and that, Let me put this way. 30 years from now, very, very possible. Yeah, that's what I'm talking I'm talking not, about that kind of horizon. Yes. No, nowhere in the near future, Not in, probably not in my lifetime. Yeah, well, we, we didn't Google so, this before we uh, came on, but... We know that China has announced that they're going uh, all electric for vehicles, I think, within 10 or 15 years. And yeah. because they have such a huge market, uh, that's going to help uh, set the stage for uh, everybody else. Because they're, they're, right. you won't be able to, to buy a uh, gas engine uh, in, uh, in uh, China in some period of time that's relatively short. And even California, what is it? Uh, 2035, uh, they're supposed to no, no longer allow, at least that's the aspirational date. So um, I think it's coming, although I have a lot of problems with it that I don't understand. Yeah. Well, you, it's funny you should mention um, buy an electric car uh, only if you had a, a solar uh, panel on your roof. My daughter and son-in-law have bought a Tesla, ah. and uh, they love it. They love the car. It's a small fortune, mind you. I could have bought a Maserati for that, but they wanted a Tesla. But they also Wait, have... I, they could have bought you a Maserati. How thoughtless <laughs> How thoughtless could they be? <laughs> Why don't I have a Maserati? Yeah. I don't know. Um, but they ha happen to have a huge solar panel array uh, mm. on their property, and so they can plug their own car in and... It doesn't cost much. They're actually sending um, electricity back to the grid, if I understand it correctly. Uh, so their electrical costs are pretty low. They're just the taxes that right. you've got to pay, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so I think, you know, there is a small minority of people who can afford this. And granted, prices come down on technology as it get, becomes more ubiquitous. But I, I can't see it being... Um, for the common man for at least 30 years. Well, here, here's, here's, even though I'm not a big fan of uh, 
of uh, these driverless cars. There yeah. are fleets of thousands being built uh, in Arizona for sure and some other areas where uh, they've been testing uh, driverless cars and most of them are all electric. Uh, right. So, but but here here's what my my problem is that quite frankly I don't understand that perhaps it's just part of the technology taking hold and they'll solve this. But the the big reason for the cars in the first place, I believe, first of all, that probably a lot lower maintenance uh, when they finally get it right. Although Tesla has some mixed message on maintenance, but in general, the uh, electric engines will uh, the, the motors will will probably be a, a lot uh, friendlier. But I don't understand if there really is an argument yet for, about the carbon footprint. By that I mean not the uh, the gas versus uh, using electricity, but a couple of things. First of all, the electricity has to come from someplace. So for a lot of places, that's from coal-powered and uh, fossil fuel-powered plants. Right. Okay, so that's one thing. Second thing is that the manufacture of the batteries, okay, and they still have some limited uh, uh, mileage on life, and that concerns me. You know, gas, you run out of gas, uh, somebody could bring a can down to you. Uh, uh, you run out of electricity, they can't just bring a, a Duracell battery. You have to have somebody come with a truck with a charger or something to get you yeah. to a charger. But yeah. the carbon footprint required to make those batteries. So I don't know that it's actually uh, uh, solving that problem yet, which I think is worthy of being solved, I believe, in climate change. And even if it's not 100% uh, uh, humankind generated, it's uh, certainly we're contributing to it. And the less fossil fuels you burn for that, then the less you're going to have that. But we may have other problems. But I don't know that it's net neutral that uh, an electric well, car. Well, it, it's not, a, it's not that, now. That's what, I, I and, you know, it can't possibly be now. But well, the right. concept, the concept is that sometime in the future it could be. Right. And I don't know that that's true either, because quite frankly, um, you know, gas, natural gas, I think is always going to be with us, mm -hmm. quite frankly. Whether gasoline and jet fuel and, you know, uh, uh, fossil fuel products, oil, basically, um, are always with us. I don't know. I'll give it 30 to 50 years, um, figuring that technology could certainly advance to the point where we could have electric jet engines, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and batteries that won't crap out in midair. Right. Here's, my, here's my disappointment with the whole thing. First of all, I think that electric is just so much headwind or tailwind, I guess is the proper way to, to phrase it, behind electric vehicles now. I mean, Tesla has certainly uh, uh, gotten the publicity. And uh, as I say, this the China commitment to all electric uh, vehicles or I don't know whether it's all electric or non-fossil fuel, because to me that the 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 solution, if they could figure out how to do it properly, was hydrogen, because when it when it's finished doing its thing, it leaves you know enough left to water your lawn. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I and by the way, I've seen a couple of uh, uh, hydrogen cars around, and they're like uh, you know those quiet little Priuses. Yeah. Uh, uh, which I, I, to me. I think that probably the Prius is the one that before Tesla made the whole thing uh, really popular because you had the 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 value of the concept of the electric car, okay. Right. But you weren't you're not worried about getting stuck someplace because uh, you couldn't have recharging. So I think they they probably did the most to advance electric cars. Tesla has the promotional stuff. I just don't know that. It is really going to provide the 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 value proposition, and I, I'd love to hear from somebody or get an article. Maybe somebody could send us an article that, in fact, they have a plan for this to be uh, a, a positive sense of of uh, no more pollution in the air. I just don't know that it's happened because between charging them with with uh, I say traditional power plants. And the manufacture of the batteries, and what do you do with all the batteries when when they're finished? Can right. they be reused, or are they going to go in a landfill? So you bury them in Iron Mountain along with all the uh, nuclear fuel. Okay, so your short-term goal is a Maserati. 
<laughs> and I, absolutely. I don't need no electric Maserati either. And I'm looking for a good hydrogen car. Yeah, yeah. So, Plus, you know, you, you mentioned the maintenance. Um, granted, these electric cars won't need the traditional amount of maintenance. Uh, but so far as we can tell it at this point, and again, the price will probably come down oh. over a period of years. As near as we can tell at this point, they are really, really expensive to repair. Uh, yeah. The batteries, you know, if you've got to replace the batteries. And to buy, the, if we weren't getting a government uh, uh, payment uh, to offset the price of the cars, uh, you, we'd probably have about 50% uh, uh, fewer electric vehicles on the road today. You can count on and that, hybrids, yeah. 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 So, so we'll see. All right, so let's, uh, let's try know, that. What, uh, uh, hold on, we know hold that. on. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold, we know that our audience hold, is smarter hold, than we are. Hold on. Certainly smarter than I am, okay? So I'm going to ask, before you do something actually probably a lot more intelligent about what, than what I'm going to say, is that if okay. anybody has a really decent idea or links to uh, uh, net neutral or whatever else on, on carbon emissions and do they really make sense, please send us a link. Go ahead, John. Now say something intelligent. We would, we would love to have that information. So we could, for once, speak intelligently about the subject. Well, we couldn't speak um, intelligently about it, I think, even when we got that information, but it would be nice to know. All I was going to say, Art, is uh, it's amazing that our generation, baby boomer generation, has lived through so many technological changes that our parents wouldn't recognize the world today. And the electric car, and generally speaking, the end of fossil fuels, would be another revolution that would change the, the way the world works. We wouldn't recognize it. Right. Like who? Who no. would who would have thunk streets without a lot of horse manure in the middle of the street anymore? And that was because right. of the internal combustion engine. So yeah. I, I guess change is coming. Yeah. You think so? <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, with uh, those two great pearls of wisdom, I think it's time to say goodbye. And uh, please let us know what you like best about Celebrating Act 2. And the, and the way you can tell us that you appreciate us is go to uh, YouTube and, and look for Celebrating Act 2 with the number 2 and subscribe. And then you'll get more, more nuggets like this uh, just <laughs> showing up at your doorstep. More gyms, yeah, yes. every week. Every, well, every day we've got something. As okay. Rosanna, so, Rosanna uh, Dana used to say, it's always something. And as John and Art always say, wear a mask. Yes. See you soon. Bye. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.